Hello friends and welcome to my channel, The Covered Chipboard. Today's video is about a brand new product that I've released in my shops. It's the weather vanes for miniature items in 112 scale. I'll be offering this as a finished item or SVG files at probably within the next week in these various different des designs. So here is how you construct the weather vanes. They're all the same. You have a top, then you'll have two circles, then you'll have a dowel rod, then you'll have a cogwheel, another circle, and your north, south, east, and west. And near the end of the video, I will show you my painting technique for finishing it in a rusty copper kind of finish. So I'm just going to use Eileen's Tacky Glue. It's one of the favorite ones that I use. And um, a little toothpick probably to apply glue. What you want to do is take one of the circles and glue it to the bottom post. And you only want to glue it about halfway in, not all the way in. And then you want to be sure to remove some of the glue from the bottom. And it's a very tight fit, so you'll have to push it on there. But then you want to attach your dowel rod in the same hole. And again, it goes only about halfway. So you should be able to get this in there without any problem. You'll have to um, find a way to uh, support the dowel rod while it's drying. Here you see me adding some more glue and sticking it in there and adjusting the other part. Then you take the second circle and slide it on and it will attach to the bottom of the first one that you put on and help stabilize that dowel rod. And you need to let this completely dry before you go any further or it will tend to fall apart on you. Just make sure that your dowel rod is straight and supported well so that it's not moving easily. And then prop it up somewhere so that it will dry. The next part would be the north, south, east, and west. And these glue into the cog wheel on all of the little notches. So I've just added glue in the notch and again, these pieces will have to be supported as well at, at some point. And then you just glue them in right like this. Wipe off your excess glue. Now I'm getting something to support the pieces so that it will stay. That's just a, a quarter inch piece of foam core that I've got laying around that I've used to support it. And you do have a little wiggle time when you're attaching these pieces. So basically you're going to attach all of your pieces in the correct order and let them sit till they're completely dry. Now that everything's dry, you want to take the portion with the north, south, east, and west and slide it up onto the dowel rod. And look at it, and make sure that it's not up so high that it's going to hit the parts that hang down if your design that you're using has that. Then you're going to add some glue around the dowel rod and then take the other circle and slide it up underneath until it reaches the area that you've glued. And just keep turning it and sliding it up until you've got where the glue's pretty well in there. Wipe off the excess glue and let that sit and dry. Now, if you want your weather vane to turn, you would leave the weather vane, or you would leave the north, south, east, and west part alone so that it can spin and eventually just let it fall down on top of that last circle. If you don't want it to turn, you can go ahead and add a little bit of glue in there and push it straight down onto that last 
circle and that will stabilize it. Just make sure that your north, south, east, and west are going the correct direction. Here's a look at the three different finishings that I offer on my site if you buy a finished item. You'll have a black iron, a brown rusted tin or metal, and then the last one is a copper that's been aged and has a vertigree uh, patina. So to create this, I'm just going to do this on a sample piece of wood so that you can see how it works. And I'm only going to show the copper one. This is a metallic paint that I've used. It's from Deco Art, and it's uh, copper. So you'll paint your whole entire piece with the paint. And you'll need to be careful now when you're doing this. Um, I would paint the dowel rod and the, um, the top part with the circles and the dowel rod. I would paint all of that, let it completely dry before adding the north, south, east, and west spinning part if you want it to spin. If you don't care that it spins, then you don't have to worry about it. You can paint it all afterwards, but it's probably easier to paint it ahead of time and let it all dry. And then make sure when you do paint it that you don't have um, the holes clogged up. This is a stiff uh, bristle stencil brush, and it's the best way I've found to use it. And I'm using a folk art. Um, sorry, I don't remember the name of it. Uh, I'll have to check that, but it is in the uh, tutorial in my or in the design when you purchase the kit. And I'm just going to dry brush this on top. So you fold up a piece of paper towel or get a scrap piece of paper, but I find paper towel works best. Then you're going to dip the brush into the paint and wipe most all of it off. Now it depends on how much you want. And I kind of use a stippling method of applying this paint. So you're just tapping the brush all the way around. And you just keep repeating this. You can have a little bit more paint on your brush if you want. And you just keep repeating this on your project until you get a finish that you're happy with. There's no right or wrong to it. So you can add as much of this turquoise color um, on top of it as you like. You can completely cover it and that's all there is to it. You can brush it if you'd rather have a smoother instead of the stipple effect. I suggest that you get a scrap piece of wood and try it out and see what you like best. But that's all there is to it. Easy peasy. Then you want to seal it when you get done. The black has been painted black with gray stippled on top. And I used a, whoops, <laughs> as I drop everything and it goes flying, I used a wrought iron paint from Folk Art in a pale gray to create the black aged finish. And here you go. This is the copper and Dutch aqua is the name of it that I use for the copper patina. And then the last finish and folk art is my favorite brand of paint to use always and usually the matte finish is what I buy but this is the coffee bean which is your brown and then I've used cinnamon or cinnamon stick to go on top and that's how I've created the rusted metal finish. So there you go. Like I said, easy peasy.